Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at an application of transfer learning. We're going to see that we'll take the VGG neural network, which is trained to recognize images, and use that to extract features that we'll put into another learning algorithm that will attempt to transfer the style from an image like a painting to a actual photograph. Okay, there's a link to this Jupyter Notebook in the description of this video. I'm going to go ahead and open it in Colab just so that everything displays correctly and so that I can run code if so desired. So we're going to implement style transfer. And we're going to use transfer learning to do this. So here you can see the example that I'm showing here. This is Brookings Hall at Washington University. And this is a very famous Impressionist painting by Gauguin, I think. I really should have paid attention in art appreciation class, which is about as deep as I went into art. So I can only appreciate it, not so much create it. And here is the photo from Washington University rendered in a more Impressionist style. I believe that's Impressionism. So this is what we're going to look at. This is based on a Cura's example that Francois Chalier put together. He is pretty much the main guy behind Curis. So I'm using his example here on neural style transfer. I put it into similar format as the, as the class, but largely it's, it's his example with Curis. We're going to take two images in particular. We're going to take the base image and then the style reference image path. So this is the base image, Brookings Hall. And you can use any images you want to in this example. I have it so that you just upload them into the Jupyter Notebook. And style reference, this is the style that you're trying to copy. This is just code that is used to actually upload the image. I'm uploading Brookings Crop, which is a, a picture that I have of Brookings Hall. And then I'm uploading the Van Gogh picture, which is his very, very famous Starry Night picture. We're going to put three weights into here. The total variation weight, this shows how much emphasis to place on basically pictures, pixels nearby blending correctly. You don't want to do these kind of things pixel by pixel by pixel, or each pixel is an individual case and it won't necessarily look right. I found this to be the least important of them. If I set this to zero, it, it doesn't it doesn't so much hurt things. The style weight is how much emphasis you want to put on matching that style. And content weight is how much emphasis you want to put on matching the original image. And these three together become a multi-objective loss function. Here is what we're setting these to. These are the ones that Francois used, and I believe they match what the paper, the original paper did. By the way, the original paper is here. It's actually a very readable paper. I suggest looking at it if you're, if you're interested in it. By Leon Getz, Alexander Ecker, and Matthias um, Bethke. So these are the three that, that originally came, came up with this idea. And then I'm using the, the version of it that Francois wrote the, the Kira's code around. So moving on, we basically load the, the two images. So there's the original of Brookings Hall, and then there's original of the style that we're transferring. We do need to pre-process the image. There's not a lot of pre-processing that we have to do on here. It's largely getting it ready for the VGG network that we're going to place it through, which comes from Keras. We're adding a axis to this. That additional axis is the batch. So you have the batch, the height and the width, and the color depth, which is three for RGB. VGG are really any of these pre-trained neural networks that you have in Keras, you might need to do some pre-processing on it. They all have a pre-processed image. You need to always run that through there just to be just to be safe. 
and then you convert it to a, a tensor. And we're also, this is the way Francois set it up, we're scaling it down to the number of rows and columns that he specified up here. So it's 400 by 400. Well, actually, it's 400 by whatever keeps the aspect ratio the same. And then there's the deprocess image. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Basically, we are resizing it to, to the number, the, to the same dimensions. And then we are, I mean, mainly what this is doing is it's not resizing the image per se, it's dropping that batch dimension back out of there so that we don't have that. Then we're also centering the red, green, and blue about these values. So we're, we're bringing them back into the normal RGB ranges. These are the same colors that this process input here shifted it into for VGG. Just Google those three together and you'll, you'll basically see that that's, that's a VGG thing. And then we're also converting from blue, green, red to RGB. Uh, blue, green, red, that comes mainly from OpenCV and the excuse that OpenCV, Open Computer Vision gives for why they used the very annoying blue, green, red is that's how older cameras represented this. Older digital cameras, not older, older cameras. And then this clip, that is necessary because this addition that we're doing, that might knock something out of the 0 to 255 range that you're dealing with for red, green, blue. So clipping it back into the normal range that we'd have. They also have to be unsigned integers because RGB is not floating point. It's just red, green, and blue values, three bytes. Now, we're going to calculate the style and the content and variation loss. You're gonna see something real quick called a gram matrix. And gram matrices, matrices are, essentially what you're doing is you're taking the transpose of your matrix. So it's an operation on just one. So we're going to take the style that we get and the style is going to be several layers from the VGG neural network. So we're going to use the VGG neural network to detect style. We, rather than looking at the pixels of the image, we look at a higher level of abstraction, which are the features that VGG is extracting, those convolution layers in there. We're going to basically extract several of those convolution layers, and those are vectors. We put those together to make a matrix, then we transpose it and multiply it, and that gives us the gram matrix. So that's what a gram matrix is. You're basically just doing the transpose and then multiplying the two together. Why would you want to do that? Well, that's what the authors of the paper chose to do so that all those layers that were separate are now correlated together. And that correlation gives a matrix that is a representation of the style. So we're going to get that style matrix out of the original and a style matrix of the image that we're gradually optimizing. So we're optimizing the image so that these styles get closer together. We use the gram matrix to extract the styles for two of those objectives of the loss function the style, and then the similarity to the original. So we're using that the, these convolution features to operate at a higher level rather than just comparing all of the pixels of the images to, to look at the, the style and then how similar an image are. Now for the third objective where we're looking at the neighboring pixels, that we truly are. We're not using gram matrices for that. We're just comparing the images after we shift it so that nearby pixels are being compared to each other. So the mathematics behind it, you would see V times, where V represents the matrix, V times the transpose of that matrix equals the gram matrix. And this is how you calculate the, the gram matrix. You're basically doing the transpose of the matrix. Now you do have a three-dimensional matrix because of that, because of the RGB. And then we just basically do the, the matrix multiply. Here we're calculating the style loss. So the style loss, we're getting the gram matrix of the features, so the output of those convolution layers for the, the style image. 
the combination, that starts out as the input image, but then gradually, as we optimize it, it gets updated. We are taking the difference between the style and the, the current image that we're currently at, and we're, so that's the difference between them. We're squaring it, so that's an implied sort of absolute value that, that means it's just the magnitude. It's not taking into consideration the sign. Otherwise, it's important if, if C comes first or if S comes first. I mean, there's your L1 and L2 differences, and that gets into, are you taking the absolute value or are you taking the square? The square is very common. This is similar to a Euclidean distance if you worked with that before. But now you need to normalize it in some way. So you're normalizing it by basically looking at how many individual numbers you're, you're, you're going across. And we're reducing the sum that takes because it's a matrix and you would have the you would have all the rows and columns that crunches it down to a single number. And since you're summing it, you're adding up all of those values and this is basically how many how many numbers are in the matrix and also taking into account that you're squaring these. So that's your style loss. It's it's essentially the difference between those two gram matrices and the gram matrix is the style encoding of the image. You're doing something very similar for the, the content loss, but here you're comparing the difference between the base and the combination. So the combination is just where we're currently at as we're optimizing, but we're comparing it back to the base, where up here we're comparing it to the style. We do the same reduced sum, and we're, we're squaring the difference, but we're not doing the normalization. And that's just really how it was set up in, in the actual paper. I would tend to think that you could do the same normalization down here, or I mean, basically make these consistent, but they probably got better, better results on the style by, by doing this. It'd be a fun experiment. I didn't try it to just basically take this off and see what happens if you put that in there pure. My guess is the weights would have to change considerably. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I, I've not done that, that experiment, but that's kind of where my mind goes looking at, this, looking at this code. And here we're basically just doing a shift. Notice also too, we are just looking at, we're only looking at one value and this is the current, this is the combination, this is where we're currently at. And we're just looking at how coherent the actual um, pixels are, how similar the pixels are together. This has the effect of almost doing a bit of a blur, but this is, this is the third part of the, of the objective function. So here we're loading the VGG neural network. This is basically just a network that was trained to take images in and classify them to the 1,000 types of image that were in ImageNet originally. We're not even using those 1,000 images. We're just getting the intermediate features that it learned so that it could recognize those classes. And here it gets downloaded and, and we have it. So now we can create that loss function and it's, it's dealing with these three images. Combination image is just where we're currently at as we're optimizing it. And the optimizer, the optimizer that you normally see optimizing the weights of a neural network, it's optimizing the pixels of this image. So the pixels of the image are actually the parameters that's being optimized. So it's important to think about this, so that you're not training a neural network itself to know how to make the style transfer. You're literally processing the image itself. So if you wanted to do video style transfer, which is a whole different area of, of, of research, this wouldn't work so well because you have to go through this, this optimization on literally every single frame. So you would do a different approach most likely for video. And I have not delved into, into that area of research, at least at this point. The base image is where you're starting from. The base image and the combination image are the same image on the first epoch. And then the style reference, that's the style that you're trying to transfer. These are the names of all those convolution layers that you're extracting the features from. And this is how we compute the loss. We are essentially grabbing those features from it and calling 
these uh, the style loss, the other loss functions in turn. And this is the function that we are going to actually use gradient tape to take the derivative of to uh, to get to get those those actual values. If you want to see stepping through each of these, I do have a video where I go much much deeper into how you take apart uh, the 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 code to actually actually do this. This is the function. So this is a TensorFlow function. So we can use the gradient tape on it to literally take the derivative of this entire function and optimize the parameters. Again, the parameters are that combination image as you gradually go through. And this is it going through the 4,000 iterations. It's just gradually going through all of this. You can see the loss gradually decreasing. And this is the image that you finally result in. And you can, you can download it. You can run the same code on any images and styles that you want to transfer. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to follow along with the rest of this course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a like if it was helpful to you. Thank you very much.